He is wonderful. And we, we're praying for Sister Brenda that the Lord will intercede on her behalf. Heal her husband. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them. God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth and God said behold I have given unto you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth to every fowl of the air to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherefore wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so and the Lord saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Look at your neighbor and said, God said, you're good. God said, uh, I'm going down here today. Today's Father's Day this morning. You know, I, sometimes you got the responsibility to preach all the time. And when you preach as many times as I preach during the years, sometimes you don't feel like preaching. Father's Day, somebody should preach to me. Amen. Should have a sister to preach to, to us today. And revere fathers. Now, I think it's critical to understand that much of the time, our ailment is how we think about ourselves. And for the most part, the, the greatest problem is really not how other people assess you. But the problem is how you feel about yourself. I think it's very critical to understand that the Bible is not just philosophical in its presentation. And many times what we do is we preach philosophically, but not psychologically. The greatest work that I have is not philosophical presentations. I mean, we argue many times about how people should be baptized. We argue whether we should have communion uh, with wine or grapefruit juice or grape juice grape juice not grapefruit we argue about receiving the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues and we and if you notice churches that are what they call mega churches I think that's to be redefined but they have no philosophical name on the church for instance, this is the city of refuge. If you go to Dallas, you see the Potter's House. But you won't see the Potter's House Baptist Church or the city of refuge Baptist Church or Methodist Church. And, and the reason is simple. Why should, you, why should I allow you to decide whether you'll come in or not? Contingent on your philosophical position, your philosophical view. But the greatest work of the preacher is really Romans chapter 12. And that is be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If my mind is involved at all, then the presentation has to be psychological and not just philosophical. 
because if I'm going to renew my mind, then you need to make a psychological presentation and any psychology is going to focus on making you and I feel better about ourselves. It's not what people do and what they say that gives me or takes the edge from me. At the end of the day, it's how I view myself that is going to determine how successful I am or how much vision I have or what I think I'm capable of. It's all how I view myself. Now, the problem why the Bible operates the way it does and what I see in the scripture is God saying to me that I am better than I think I am. Alright, let's, we're going to go philosophical for a minute. Hopefully it'll lead to something psychological. God feels better about me than I feel about myself. Because he knew what he made when he made me. See, part of the problem is that we have allowed people, and sometimes it began in our own families, to minimize and reduce us so that we don't think much of ourselves. Let me go a little deeper with that. I believe that when you meet God for the first time, you've met yourself. You can meditate on that. You can disagree. How do you assess God in your intellect? if you're not thinking of God through the mechanics of your own mind. That's why I keep telling people, and I'll tell you again, that your conceptualization of God is not mine. And my conceptualization of God is not yours, but no one of us has it all. So we use the scriptures as a substratum or as the platform by which we form our thoughts of God. But one of the great problems with church is the preacher wants you to think of God like he thinks of God. But he is not there for you in every moment of your life. Oh, the truth is, I see you very seldomly. So I see you on Sunday and I see you on Wednesday. But most of your life is lived without the preacher. You know, I, I get all these accolades today and I think maybe it's unfair. They gave me a check. Did they give anybody else one? Oh. But for... <laughs> yeah, I can share it, of course. I already did, I promise. The accolades and the admiration is significant to the psychological disposition. But at the same time, you have managed and you have overcome many instances without the preacher. It was your conceptualization of God that got you through some of the worst moments that you've had. So, if my thinking of God is strong, then that's my thinking of myself. Because I cannot separate my thoughts of God from myself. Because I'm the only one thinking in here, so I'm the one that's formulating the concept of God, which goes beyond my sensual perception. 
I'm looking at situations that are negative. I'm looking at things that are problematic. And yet still, I can have joy in the middle of what's problematic because my conceptualization of God, according to my faith, will outdo any situation that I find myself in. And if you bring me to death, I'll bring you to resurrection. Ooh, if you take me to death, my concept of God is that death is not my final ending. I will rise again. So now, my significance in my relationship to God is how I think about myself. So it becomes very important for me to understand how God in the scriptures thinks about me. He creates everything and he makes everything out of his own mind. But when it comes to you and I, he makes us in his own image. In his image and in his likeness. Ooh, oh, I'm going to have some fun. Now, for the brothers in here, who feel like we should minimize the significance of women. If you notice carefully, when he says he, we were made in his image, so he created man in his image, male and female. <laughs> Which tells me then, that when we talk about our women, we talk about ourselves. <laughs> Why? Because she claims the image of God as we do, according to the scriptures. So when we talk about weaker vessel, I think I'm going to go over this again. When we call the woman a weaker vessel, it's all pulchritude in us. It's all outside. Mm hmm. See, it's quiet now. The weakness of the vessel does not. Talk about the weakness of what the vessel carries. I must go over that again. She is the weaker vessel, which is pulchritudinous, which is physical, corporality, body. Uh, I'm looking for a woman with a size 14 foot. You ain't gonna find it. Uh, years ago, years ago, I, I had basketball, uh, I had basketball camps in Longview, Texas. And I had two of the, the baddest women to run it, Paula and Pam McGee. If you see the McGee who plays for Golden State, that's Pam's son and uh, McGee. And, and both girls were superstars at USC, twins. And we would play them ball. My, my brother Max, Randy, would play ball against them. And Pam, Pamela would, Paula would dunk on you. So they came to Longview and did a camp, and I'm going to redo the camps in in Longview again and they came and did a camp and I took them to Neiman Marcus needless Marco <laughs> and the girls bawled they cried like babies because they had size 12 and they couldn't get in the shoes at Neiman Marcus because they looked like Neiman Marcus is made for the Orientals Japanese kind of thing 
physically, no matter how good they were playing ball, I am not a professional baller, but I could play with them. You know, the only problem is hand checking. You all think about that later. I had to quit. I said, no, I'm walking off the court. The point is that you have glasses at home. And if you have a wine glass, you've got a thin glass that breaks easily. If you have a juice glass, you've got a solid glass that's real tough. The fragility of the glass does not limit what it contains. Have I lost you on that? The fragility, the, no matter how fragile the glass is, I can still pour juice in a wine glass and it can contain it. When it says it'll break easy, you have to be careful when you're washing it because it'll break easier than a juice glass. But a wine glass does not dictate what goes in it. When God made man and woman, he made both in his image. Oh, I wish somebody get it. And, and, and the wonderful thing about it is that the woman should be more refined than the man because she's a step above the earth than he is. Now, he made the man out of the earth, but he took the ribbon, the rib out of the woman. And he created the woman with the rib. Uh -huh. Which means he was already made. He took something out of her, out of his side, not out of his back. Not out of his back. She came out of his side. And what he put in in her is the same that he put in the man she just got a more fragile body because she has to function in reproduction i wish somebody would understand me so her fragility is only physical not intellectual not cognitive and she deserves as much respect as any man living See, the problem with the man who does not understand her value beats up on her physically because that's the only way he can outpower her. Mm -hmm. The only strength a man has over a woman is physical so and whenever and it, you got to understand now how you feel about her is indicative of how you feel about yourself I've heard people say well, well, well I married a fool well only a fool <laughs> would marry a fool now here's what you said. You're going to make my point. Well, she fooled me. That's my point exactly. The, when you're made after God's own image, now notice now, once he makes you after his image and his likeness, you got to be in charge. Notice now, once you're after his image, you have to have dominion. Let me go, let me go, let me go deep on this. God is a spirit. 
and he's an omnipresent spirit so he doesn't have a shape so when he says let us make man he is projecting to his son Jesus Christ he has to project let us make man he's now dealing with the image of God bodily is Jesus so even though Jesus is after Adam Adam is made in his pattern have I lost you Jesus is chronologically after Adam but Jesus is Adam's pattern let us make man in our own image but Jesus is the image of God bodily now notice now we're talking about what what is contained and the respect that we should give because of conceptualization of God that goes beyond body. One of the things that is most dreadful that we don't do is we don't follow what Jesus said when he said man looks at the outward appearance. But God looks at the leb, the heart. So God is not concerned about your shape your size your color because he is penetrating into who you are on the inside mm -hmm. Be because because you you think you're ugly or because you think you're pretty it influences your mind but who determines whether you're pretty or you're ugly who determines what size your nose ought to be? See, I don't want to say this because from I got mad. When people start chopping themselves up, the problem is not their physicality. The problem is what they lack on the inside. Uh, like, very few people have this nose my size. I got a good size nose. Hey man, I, I look in the mirror, man, my nose shows up. I got a good size nose. <laughs> But here's how I justify the size of my nose. It's my African cooling system. So when I'm out playing ball with all the guys with the little noses, they can't keep up with me. Because they can't cool down like I can. And I tell them, look, I take one sock suck of air and all of you gonna choke because I'll swallow up all the air I am not going to let some small nose person make me chop my nose God gave me the nose I have and I thank God for the nose I got but you sisters have allowed two percent two percent of women to decide how you ought to look and it's not an external problem it's your conceptualization of God has not allowed you to believe that he gave you dominion what would life be like if everybody looked like you It is in his diversity that he proves his power in his ability to create 
differences. And because you're different from somebody, you shouldn't feel less than. Ooh, I feel it here. Uh, let, let, me, let me take it further. Let me take it further. Let me take it further. He has to give me dominion because he cannot look in the world that he created and let a four-footed beast have power over me. Why? Because he's looking at himself. If he's looking at himself as creator, then he has to give his image dominion. We have allowed people, whether during slavery, whether doing colonialism, imperialism, but we have allowed people to diminish our self-esteem. Sometimes even in your family, sometimes when somebody in a relationship is trying to dominate you, and trying to control you. In order to control you, they minimize who you are. And when they minimize you and you accept what they have done, you no longer like yourself. And when you stop liking yourself, you can't tell me that you love God if you don't like yourself. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And who wants to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't like themselves? Oh, I feel like shouting here. Uh, Brian uh, drives. I have pilots who fly. And I tell them, uh, Brian, am I paying you enough? I ask him all the time, do, do, do I pay you enough? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I asked my pilots, am I paying you enough? Here's why. I don't want a depressed, broke pilot at 35,000 feet in the air while I'm sitting back thinking everything's all right and he's suicidal. Amen. I don't need Brian upset rolling down the street at 100, 100 miles an hour, I need this man happy with himself. And I'm here to tell you, you can minimize somebody and reduce them all you want to, but if you're with somebody and they're not happy, how can you be happy? This is Father's Day. Dominion and domination was never God's intention because God does not want his image reduced. Oh, I feel like shouting. When you praise yourself you praise God when you allow yourself to be minimized you have just allowed your God to be minimized why because you're in his image and in his likeness when a man does not take care of his business he minimizes God. Now, you say praise is in the choir and praise is singing and worship. I'll tell you what praise is. Praise is when God looks in the earth and sees a man that he gave dominion, see him taking care of business, that's praising God right there. He don't have to open his mouth and say a word. When he walks into his space, he's supposed to be in charge. Y'all excuse me got a little happy he 
he's in the image of God in his likeness now here's what sin did sin didn't destroy the image sin remove the likeness the image is a physical pulchritudinous aspect of the human being which is minuscule part of you your physicality your spirit will not age like your body And one of the problems we have as human beings is we spend more time working the body than we do the mind. It's Peter who argued that we should be less on the outward appearance and more on the inner. He talks about adorning we adorn the outside now the reason women adorn the outside see men deal with what they have in terms of finances and it's really funny uh, I should go on a date and the, the fellas talked about the restaurants and 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 I'm, I'm a connoisseur of uh, I'm a connoisseur I, I learned some things from Bishop McMurray I learned some things from Bishop Brazier and I learned some things from my sister so I'm a connoisseur of uh, culinary splendiferous experiences And I take these brothers to where I'm going to eat. Because I'm not going to eat where they're going to eat. I have not had a hamburger in 30 years, 40 years. I don't know what it's like. Take them to where I eat. And they order hamburger. Now, where, where I eat, the hamburger is $25. And I'm saying with all of this food, that's what you're going to order. We could have stopped by McDonald's. Got your hamburger for $4. The body is going to move quicker than the mind. And you eat on a certain level because you've been exposed to that level. You buy certain clothes because you've been exposed to that level. The problem is we don't expose the mind. And so people control us when they control our mind. Oh, I wish you'd, you see, and, and, and they want to minimize you to control you. But God never intended for his image not to be in charge. Oh, when he made woman, he made woman out of his side. It is sin that reduced the woman. It's not God's intention for a woman to be less than a man. Oh, can, can I just tell you that the, the, the bottom line why people don't take care of the people they should take care of is they don't think much of them. Whew. If somebody thinks you're valuable, they'll treat you with value if somebody thinks that you're less than you're not deserving but but many of us have been cultivated to feel not deserving i wish i could talk to you uh 
you don't deserve to be called a fool. And the answer is God does not make fools. He makes intellectual, creative people who if they trust and believe in themselves, they would refuse to be called a fuse. You know, you're trying to put me in a, king, in, a, in a crib when God has me in a king-sized bed. You're trying to cut off my mind so you can control my body. But what is a body if there is no mind in it? This is Father's Day. It is very critical to understand then that I'm in his image, I have dominion. So the question now is do I have the power to dominate? And who am I supposed to dominate? The only being I'm supposed to dominate are the animals. So you are not going to treat me. Because the only creatures to be dominated are the animals. So, so, unequally yoked. God said, it's not good for man to be alone he created woman but if the woman is not on your level you still alone <laughs> and if the man is not on your level you still alone. Ooh, I want to shout. I want to shout on that. So the next question now is how do you judge level? Well, certainly we have ruled out physicality. So it has to be the lab or the immaterial personality that, that is not physically controlled. It's the spirit of the person. The disposition and the attitude that works for oneness. See, see, the thing is that uh, the, the two become one sexually. But that's the easiest part of becoming one. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. The easiest part of being one with anybody is physical. To be one intellectually, psychologically, spiritually is a whole nother thing. The reason why these marriages mess up is because it's only physical. And when I get tired of you physically, the excitement is over. But if you can buy my books, if you know what I eat, know how to treat me. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. I ain't got to invest anything in you to have sex with you. 
but I got to invest in you for you to think like me, walk like me, talk like me, and I ain't giving that up easy. This woman is too much in my favor. This is Father's Day and I'm happy. Oh, when you invest your time, you invest your time for somebody to think like you, somebody to be able to talk with you, somebody who can listen to you, somebody who can understand you. You invested some time in that. Mm -hmm. And that person becomes so valuable to you. I can't leave you. Who am I? When I'm going to train some 30 year old now? to train now amen do you know how much it cost me to train you how much of my time how many hours to get you straight I ain't getting rid of you now the devil is alive you could get wrinkled all you want to you ain't got the Botox nothing I got enough in you Give somebody a high five. Say that man ain't going nowhere. I'm too valuable. I'm too valuable. I'm too important. Because once that connection spiritually, you become a major part of that individual's life. And, and the Bible is very clear. How can two walk together except there be agreed? And on the equally yoke is the worst thing you ever want. You want somebody on your level, somebody who can talk your talk, walk your walk, and it takes investing of yourself to get them to that point. And once they come to that point, Two people in a house and they're jealous of each other. That's madness. You can't be in a house envious of the person you're with. I mean, if she's smarter than you, it's a credit to you. You got her to say yes, ignorant man. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you a minute. Two people. Two people together in a house can conquer the world. Because the Lord operates in the smallest crowd. Two or three. If you touch and agree, he has reduced the city of refuge down to two people. If he can get two people, what has destroyed relationships and marriage is people just can't agree. And if there's no agreement, there is unequal yoking. And you can't make your life work unequally yoked. It's fussing all the time. I, I, said, I said to my kids, I said, uh, you know, when they grew up, I said, what did you hate most about your childhood the first one said you and mama fussing so I said I got three of them let me try this again I said to the next one what was the worst thing about your childhood you and mama fussing I didn't ask the third one and it was now I'm pastoring the church 
I'm the pastor down in Longview, driving up in the big old 500 SEL, arguing all the way to church, just <laughs> kids sitting in the back seat. <laughs> and I pull up into the pastor's spot. And as I pull up in the spot, the saints are coming, going to church. I open the door. Oh, praise the Lord. How do you, oh, just, just, uh, and the little kids in the back going. What kind of immediate transformation? Then I would get up to preach. And she had a front seat. It's like she looking at me now. Now, what are you going to say about God today? <laughs> say something about Jesus now. So to fix it, I'd get up with my own little confession that nobody knew. I'd get up and say, you know, uh, it doesn't matter who you are and what your title is. Everybody's got problems. Now turn to Matthew chapter. Because I had to ease how I was feeling because the worst unhappiness is to be in a house with somebody and you're unhappy. And much of our unhappiness is predicated by selfishness. Because many times we go into a relationship to dominate. Well, let me put it another way. Anybody who comes in your life sh should come in your life predicated on what they envision for you. Not to come in your life to take from you. They should come in your life because they see what you can become and what you will be. And instead of reducing you, they lift you up and take you to another level. Oh, I feel like shouting here. That means all of this foolishness about better half or less half. I'm never a half. Whatever half you want to be, that's up to you. But I'm whole all by myself. Ain't no better half. security so here's the freedom of equality and I get in planes all the time and there's in there's independence that is interdependent but not codependent the security man the, 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 the security man has to sign off on who gets on board independently of the pilot the mechanic has to make sure that this thing will get off the ground and he has to sign off when there's a problem when 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 I see security when I see the engineer uh, or the 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 maintenance I know we're gonna be sitting for a while soon as he walks on then here comes the pilot he's gonna tell you the problem now he has to sign off what he knows the pilot does not know about the equipment the pilot makes a general inspection look at the engines but he's not going internally 
somebody has to sign off independent but interdependent not codependent when you looking for somebody you're looking for somebody who can stand independent of you so you're not searching for weakness you're searching for strength oh my god help us in here and you're searching for strength based on your conceptualization of who you are based on your concept of god i don't need a weakling with me i need somebody strong with me because i'm a strong person and strength goes with strength strength and weakness don't go together folk get mad when i tell them if you approach me you got to bring something to the table I feel like shouting here you got to have somebody with you that's in the image of God side by side they walking behind me amen walk with me talk with me challenge me question me that's how God operates I'm not gonna get mad and upset because you questioned me ignorance doesn't help me to have a bunch of yes people in my board doesn't help us I need some people who are smart enough to say the bishop that don't make sense if you go down that road you're gonna mess things up I don't need somebody sitting behind me just quiet because they're supposed to be loyal the bridge is out I'm barreling down the road at 80 miles an hour there is no bridge and you just gonna sit there and be quiet because you trying to be loyal you better holler you better stop Bishop that bridge is out feel like preaching now the, the, res the respectability that one has and I'm closing uh, maybe for the fourth time I'm closing see love does not establish respect Oh God. Love is not the substratum or the fundamental principle that brings respect. Respect is predicated on one's ability to handle responsibility. Notice image of God dominion. Image of God in charge. In charge. The monkey isn't messing up the world. The donkey's not messing up the world. The snakes, the alligators aren't messing up the world. Man is. He said, multiply. We did a good job of that. He said, replenish. We haven't done that. We haven't done that. The problem is free will. And when God puts us in charge, he takes our hands off. He takes his hands off. He takes his hands off. We have free will. Free will makes choices we want to make the choices but we don't want
want the responsibility of the choice. Oh God. We want to choose without consulting God. You see, the man God has for you might not be the best looking man in the bunch. But he ain't got to be good looking to be a good man. Oh, I feel like shouting. This is Father's Day. I'm having a time. Uh, we'll be finished in a few minutes. We go for pulchritude and a splendor. We go for looks. Honey child, that's and, 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 and the thing is that the woman, she she knows how to get you with her pulchritudinous display. Whereas a man is walking around with a pocket full of borrowed of money. So he's got, he's projecting the money and she's projecting her body. So here's what we hear later. And yeah, that woman just wanted me for my money. But that's all you projected. And here's a woman said, oh, he just wanted me just for my body. But that's all you showed him. Control. But oh, when the mind comes out and when the expectation is high and your mind, because you think good about yourself and you never get into another relationship while you're hurting from the first one, heal yourself. Heal. And don't go looking for another man to fix the problem of the first man because it ain't going to happen. Honey, I want to be your man. I don't want to be your father. I don't want to be your doctor. I don't want to be none but your man. So if you need a psychologist, go see one before you see me. to go home. Two chances I get to talk freely. Father's Day and Mother's Day. To speak freely because we've got problems that needs to be fixed and the problem is how you view yourself. You, you take a lot of junk when you don't feel good about yourself. You take a lot of stuff you don't need to take when you're not feeling important. Give somebody a high five and say you're the most important person in this room. You're important. You're important. You're important. And you must be treated like you're important. And you've got to set the standard for how you're going to be treated. You've got to set the standard for how you're going to be talked to. You've got to set the standard for how somebody's going to deal with you. You're not dealing with me as a map. I'm nothing to walk on. I'm dealing with you standing up looking you dead in the eye. And I don't want a, a floor mat. Oh, I, I don't want a floor mat. I don't need something I can wipe the floor with. I want you standing. Looking me dead in the face. Like I raised my kids to stand. And look me dead in the face. And say, Daddy, that don't make sense. You taught me better than that. That ain't where you're going. And you ain't going out like that.
that's how you raise them you raise them to be strong raise them to be powerful raise your girls to be strong raise your boys to be managers i ain't looking for no woman to take care of me i can take care of myself Gave us dominion, but he never said love it. In fact, he says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He says you can't serve God and mammon. Once you love this world, you become the servant to the world. You no longer have dominion. So I'm saying to all my brothers, love yourself. Love yourself. Because God gave you dominion. He made you in his image. And when you love yourself and you have a little ego with it, everything around you, you make it right. Hear me when I say it. You ever seen, you ever seen people dressed up just sharp as they can be? And kids running around with noses running the raggediest little car. When you are in charge, You don't want anything around you looking raggedy. Amen. You look like a couple million dollars. Your kids look like 20 cents. Oh, we going home. We going home. I hear you. I hear you. I thought so, but every now and then they write the script. I'm closing for the last time. When you go home, you thank God for two people. Thank God for Jesus and thank God for yourself. Thank God for yourself. And, and, and I can thank God. I, I thank God for my children. I thank God for my children. And I've learned this, that if I have any regrets, my regret is that I didn't spend more time with them. The, all the little genius kids I have, the tall basketball fellas, they, they dominate in everything basketball. My son, high jump record, Claremont Colleges, and, and all of them are brilliant. Brilliant. Thank God. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let them watch TV when they want it. I told him to read, read. He ain't watching no TV. It was a little selfish for me not to let him watch TV because they come in the room and want me to buy everything they saw in the commercials. I said, ain't no, ain't no commercials in the books. You read the books. I said, read. But because of that, they can argue the finest points. They have great imagination, great projection. 
and all of them intellectual, even with the physicality. So I thank God for my kids. Now, but I had to pay for them. Education. I had to give up what I liked. And, and I got my, I got exotic taste. And I had to give up to spend 30,000 a year for two. 14,000 for the other one going to school. But when I look at them today, I see value. And I don't talk negatively about their mother. I've been away from her for 25 years and still Twenty-five years I've been away, still control her health program. You follow what I'm saying? If she wants to go see her mother when she did, I wrote the check. Who deals with anybody after 25 years? But I got some kids, and I don't want them to ever think 